And that's about how many I take out to start with. And I'm just going to make sure to pull this down. Give it just a little bit of a... And again, I'm going to ditch all of these. And then, once all of these all the way across, sometimes... Because <laughs> I think on this one, I think one or two and I'm going to be good. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Quilters Apothecary. Today we are going to be looking at a quilt that we are going to be doing custom work on and the title of it is Gypsy Wife and it is pieced by Dolly Nelson and I must say it's pieced very well um, as most of the quilts that I get in are. Now this particular quilt is going to be double batted um, and as we look at it what we see is exactly how busy it is. This is definitely going to be in the category of a piecer's quilt. It's a quilt that uh, the piecing should stand out more than the quilting uh, because it is so busy and because there are so many fabrics used in here. In fact, really, there are very few places that I think I can even show off in any anyway with the quilting. You know, and a few of those places might actually be up here at the top with these two blocks here and over to the right here so I might be able to put something here in these corners um, aside from that there's not a lot of space for me to show off any quilting uh, so this quilt uh, because it's custom I'm going to go right straight towards uh, tedious work which is going to be all ditch work um, now, a few options that could be done with this particular quilt would be some uh, mystical grid work, which is continuous curve alternative. I don't know that that's what I'm going to be using with this quilt. Um, I kind of, uh, I might use it in a few places. For example, I might use it right here um, and maybe a little bit here. Um, I'll know once I get it loaded, um, but then again, once it's loaded and I see how it looks around it with all the ditch work, I might go ahead and stay with the simple ditch work. Um, and again, even with these small framed areas, uh, the way that she's fussy cut them, I might just go ahead and ditch outside. None of them are big enough that I really, especially with the double bat, need to go in and add any stabilization. This one I might do a little bit of a square and a square in there. Uh, but aside from that, again, this whole quilt really is, uh, it, from a surface quilting perspective, simply a tedious quilt that's going to be loaded and it's going to be ditched all the way through, pretty much. It's put on a good book on tape and go for it. Um, so this is going to be pretty straightforward as, as we work our way through this particular one. Um, I absolutely love it. I think it's a wonderful piece. Um, and again, as I said, and you can look at this and see that it's pretty much already done simply by the piecing. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to load this, and we're going to see how it quilts out. Okay, so now we have our quilt loaded. I have basted around the outer edge at four stitches per inch, and I did that within, of course, an eighth of an inch, so the binding is gonna cover that all the way around. So the next step, before I actually go into the body of quilt and do all the ditch work, is I am going to ditch between the body and border of this quilt. Because the border is only about an inch and a half to two inches wide, what I've decided to do here after I ditch between the two is I'm going to mark a 45 degree chevron here. So I'm going to start from the corner here, go over there. I'm going to mark my miter. 
then I'm going to work my way into the center. And once I get to the center, I'll work my way that way uh, from that corner, and I'm going to work my way into the center. So it's going to be a simple chevron. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an inch, and I'm going to do that. I will quilt it. I'm going to pre-mark it. And from some of the uh, tutorials, you've seen me work from the body of the quilt out and back. What I'm going to do instead is stay from the outside and go in, out, over, in, out, over, in, out. That way, once I finish that, that's going to keep this border perfectly stable. And then, um, and let me add this. Um, initially, I thought possibly I might just leave the border alone, just ditch between the two, based, and then with the binding. But what I think will happen because it's on the edge is this will get distorted over time with washings. So I have a double bat, obviously. And so I decided to go ahead and do the 45 degree chevron because there are some 45 degrees in the body of the quilt with the piecing. I could do piano keys uh, inch, inch wide, um, but I've decided to kind of add a little interest and do the 45 degree chevron just because it's such a narrow border and that will keep the quilt more stable. And then we will move into the body. And as we talked about when the quilt was hanging, this is gonna be pretty straightforward. This is gonna be all ditch work with a little bit of other things within it. Uh, because I, as I said, this is a piecer's quilt. So let's bring the machine over and let's ditch between the body and border and then we will mark that chevron. I am using a brown thread to do the ditch work between the body and the border. And because I'm actually using a colored thread and I'm going to be using the same color to do the chevrons, if I air it all and I go into any of the fabric, what I'm going to do is I am going to air to the border itself in the ditch. We are not doing show ditch. We are doing just regular basic custom ditch. So we're aiming for close, but we are not aiming for perfection. This is priced out at basic custom. And so of course, doing the ditch work, we wanna keep it at basic custom ditch work. If we were doing show ditching, we would be going a lot slower. Because this is towards the back, you can see I'm using the um, step aerobics thing that I got from the secondhand store for three bucks so that I can look over the ledge of the ruler. Every time I reach my end point, I simply get off and slide it. It's a great tool to have under each of your machines. Every time I see one at a secondhand store, I grab it. Like I said, they're three bucks. It's one of the best pieces of equipment to have. This particular machine does not have a hydraulic or a lift. So it's set high. 
Okay, so now what I've done is I have ditched between the body and border. I started at the corner with my first 45, and I used my ruler and I marked inch increments all the way in, keeping the 45 degree on that um, seam line between the uh, inner sash and the outer border. And I went ahead, marked that all the way to the center. And then same thing, I started from the other side, repeated that same thing, and now I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna quilt that out. Okay, I've got it at 12 stitches per inch. We're gonna go in, out, follow the outer basting. I'm gonna line that up again. We're gonna go in, out, and now I don't have to think about anything because I already have it pre-marked. Line that up. In. Out. Follow the basting. Line that up. In. Out. Follow the basting. Line that up. In. Out. Follow the basting. Now, one thing I want to say, I already have this pre-marked, so I am using my square ruler. The square ruler does not have 45 degree marks. If I were to use a ruler that did have the 45 degree marks to do um, double checking, then I would line that up and I would double check it here with my 45 degrees. But that's one of the benefits of pre-marking is visually, even if I'm a hair off, everything's pre-marked, so I'm gonna be pretty dead on. So you have the option of doing both. There are ways to double check if you so choose. I've done enough of these that I can simply line this up once I mark, and now it's simply line work. I just follow the line. Put on my book on tape, put on my music, and just quilt away. It was worth the five minutes to quickly mark it rather than to have to count and keep track that way. I'm up here at the corner, line that up, go in, touch the corner, come out, follow the outside edge, line that up, in, out. Now I'm gonna work my way all the way over and around within my throat space. When I reach the middle, I'll show you. I'm just gonna pivot my ruler and continue on. So now I have gone over to the middle. Here is our last middle diagonal from upper left to lower right. And then we're gonna switch and then we're gonna go the opposite way to do the other side of the chevron. And because I'm pre-marked, I don't have to go down to the other end and work this way. I can just follow the marks that I've already made. Line that up. Down, stop. I'm gonna pivot. Now we're gonna head up. Follow that way, I'm there, down, up, over, down, touch, up, and I wanna slow down when I get close to that seam between the body and the border so that I don't overshoot, down, up, but I wanna make sure that I cross the ditch line. I like to go ahead um, when I ditch here and just go just one stitch past that ditch line. It's not into that inner border, but it is right up and it crosses over the ditch line. Up, over, down, up. And I'm gonna continue over and around within the throat space, and then we're gonna go into the body of the quilt. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do before I start doing the strips here, is we're gonna start, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ditch all of these blocks that are in here within the throat space. So as we come across here, I will ditch this one, I will ditch this one, and again, I'm gonna ditch all of these, and then, once all of these all the way across are ditched, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to go back to the beginning, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ditch all the strips.
all the strips will be ditched back up over so everything is going to be ditched every piecing and every strip and on some of them as we work our way down a ways into the quilt we have bigger spaces that are left open and on those I might go ahead and toss a little something and we'll see as I get there but pretty much like we had discussed when it was hanging it's a ditch it's a ditch quilt so now we are ditching everything in this throat space of the quilt and we'll go up here and it's simply if we go for a wider shot here I mean it literally is every single ditch every single ditch over and I've got the superior monopoly in and for some odd reason this this morning it was giving me a few fits but I think I've got it worked out I think it was my bobbin tension I had somebody else in on my machine so they had tightened the bobbin tension so that took me a little bit to get that organized and so again it's just that slow and tedious working my way through and as I said before you can't be shy about double ditching areas to travel especially on a quilt like this Taking my time when I head back this way, because of course this is the rough direction when you're doing straight line work to come all the way back. I'm going to come all the way back on that seam. And the double bat, of course, is making all of that wonderful piecing she did pop right out. My suggestion with stuff like this is a good book on tape or good old TV shows that you don't need to keep stopping and looking to see what's going on. I've been doing a lot of Dick Van Dyke for this particular quilt. Old Dick Van Dyke. Okay, so now I have this whole section done here. And you can kind of notice here what I've done. Um, it's a little hard to see the texture. You will see the texture when I do the final hanging up. And of course, all of this has been ditched in, all of this, all of this. Um, and with the double bat, I don't need to do anything on the inside of here. Here, I, I uh, let's move the camera over there. Sorry about that. I kind of was moving a little fast. Here I uh, double ditched, so I, I ditched around the outside, ditched around the outside here, and then I actually went in and ditched around the inside here. I did not ditch around this just because I kind of wanted that to puff up, just to kind of show off that piecing. So I'm going to cut thread, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move over to a block and show you how I'm ditching around that block. Okay, so now I'm going to go inside my square and a square. up, come back,
It's our local train that goes back and forth to and from Chicago multiple times a day. Right outside our window. I love the sound of trains. A little ditcher like this is such a nice thing to use for these small areas. It's just perfect rather than using something big like that. Of course, my first favorite is my ditcher one, which I love. But as you can see on the quilt, I usually have about five to 10 rulers sitting. stitches and now we're gonna head back over to the side and I've got one more section to do and then I'm ready to roll so I will say I have been, I actually have ordered this pattern for this quilt because it's such a cool, cool quilt. And I've already decided I'm probably going to be sending it out. Because <laughs> I think on this one, I think one or two and I'm going to be good. I like doing ditch work, but... I find that for myself, I can only do so many of the same quilt over and over. For example, I think I've done eight or 10 of the Judy Niemeyer Fire Island Hostas, and I'm, I, I no longer take any of those. When I first started quilting 20 years ago, thimbleberries were a big thing. We had a thimbleberry group where I first started doing quilting. And there were like 20 women and they'd bring me those thimbleberries and I'd get 20 at a time. And then I finally made the decision. There's only so many of a quilt that I wanna do, depending on the quilts, of course. That being said, I have yet to do one of those dream panels. And oddly enough, as silly as it is, I'd really like to try one of those. They look really cool. I bought one somewhere. And one of these days, I need to take you on a tour of my fabric room. Rich just said he's going to do that as a secret thing. And then I'll do like a, um, you know how they do the flip throughs of books on YouTube? What I'll do is I'll do a flip through of all the fabric. We'll do all the colors. We'll do have a purple flip through. We'll have a red thrip, flip through. Because I'll tell you, it's kind of fun looking through people's fabric. Yeah, especially when they don't know what they're doing it. Okay. If he ever does that, folks, and he tries to sell it to you, don't buy it. 